This is so good, I had to come back. Wait a minute. <laughs> if Brandon will come back in here, y'all, we can keep this going. Seriously, I'll start it all over again. Hold on. Let me see if I can get Brandon. Is this thing really going to shut down on me? Oh. Oh, my gosh. Come back. <laughs> I'm trying to get Brandon back. I'm trying to get him back. Stay in here with me. See if I can text you. Thank you so much. There he is. All right. <laughs> oh, Dino, play. Man, that thing was like, pow, get out of here. It's over. I was like, jeez. Oh my God! Kick this all up out of this joint. I didn't have time to say hi. Oh, bye. Good God. <laughs> oh my God! This is funny. yeah. But thank you, thank you so much. Um, Absolutely. Oh, uh, every, everybody's coming in now. Right. Literally. Literally. <laughs> Les, whenever, whenever you want to do this again, you already know. Okay. Cool. I'm a phone this call is, away. Text message is, away. This is really, really good. I have enjoyed this today. I don't usually get a chance to talk to producers because a lot of times y'all don't talk. <laughs> and I think it, it, since we're here, since we have this part still going, <laughs> I'm raising a producer, my son Cameron Neely. And I, I want to introduce you to him. Let's do it. My son is quite a find. You know, he's he's moved away. Well, I won't say moved away. He's frustrated with church. Mm -hmm. And gospel thing. He's actually in Houston right now working on an EP for a violin. Nice. <laughs> right. Nice. But so raising a producer, I've learned how they move. Mm -hmm. And y'all are just a different animal. Like yeah. Yeah. when y'all in that space, don't it don't really kind of matter who you are. You're not getting through at this moment, so you might as well save it for later. Yeah. And when you come out, it's like, oh hey, and like, hi, <laughs> you come back yeah. now. But you got, the, but that's because of the amount of focus that it really takes. Because you have to use all of your senses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and your body has to be prepared to to like just for hours. Yeah, intake in just sound. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a real thing. So when their little girlfriends be getting upset and all that, sis, calm down. Don't even go to the studio <laughs> with them. Just go shopping or something. Don't, stay don't, home. just stay, stay home. home. Stay I used to laugh when girls come to the studios and musicians and stuff. What are you doing here? Stay home. Posting up in the in the um room with the vending machines <laughs> and the coffee. Sis, he ain't even thinking about you right now. In the lounge, just waiting. <laughs> uh, just waiting. You really could be home reading a book or painting a wall or something. <laughs> what are you doing? But I know you guys are like, you are focused and concentrated like that. It's, it's so serious. So when you see a producer and they're laughing, you're like, oh, you have a minute? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's really because we are, we are leaders. Um, mm. And we take, like to Erica Badu, we take it very seriously. Yeah. Very we're very serious about our work. Yeah. And so, so answer answer this for me. Mm -hmm. Are producers responsible for the administrative side as well as the musical side of a project? Yes. Yes, they are. <laughs> um it's not, I, I, I believe that it's not the producer's job to do all of the administration and business, but it is the producer's responsibility to be involved with the budgeting, the whereabouts of the entire crew, the whereabouts of the, uh, of the artists, mm -hmm. um, knowing what time the artists are going to be there, scheduling, um, mm -hmm. all those things, the producer should be aware um, the producer should have scheduling put together for when everyone gets paid. Mm -hmm. Because, and I, I, I say that because 
in most recordings, or I say in every recording, most of the people who are there are not there out of relationship with the artist. They're there out of relationship with the producer. Right. And so because they're there, because those crew members are working because of their relationship with the producer, it's only the producer's duty and right to make sure that they are taking care of the people who are there for them. Okay. It's only right. So you make sure you know when the money's coming in. The money should be there before your band gets there that week. Mm -hmm. They should be paid at least their deposit before they get on a flight or before your rehearsal start. Mm -hmm. All those things should be, you know, talked about so that the producer is aware. And if and when, I'm not even if, when a plan has to change, the producer is aware of how to adjust without stepping on somebody else's toes. Right, right. If you okay. only worry about music stuff, um, you just run the risk of not being locked in and knowing mm -hmm. uh, where you're supposed to be, who's supposed to be, and what's supposed to be happening. Okay, and that's the difference between a producer and an MD. An MD, yes, yes. Because sometimes these young MDs think they should get producer credit, but did you do producer work? And most times, no. All right, most times, no. I mean, and, I, and you know, we're back. We don't have to be here long, but that that's some of the issues that I have with artists who call themselves producers. Wow. You're the artist going down <laughs> as a producer and you've done nothing. Mm -hmm. you haven't edited, you haven't arranged, right? You haven't written. You ain't done nothing. <laughs> you talking about you, you talking about you a producer? <laughs> nah. You you ain't a producer. You're the right. artist. Yeah. You're the artist. Yeah. This question about what about the administrator? What what's your answer to that? So I believe that the producer should have an administrator mm -hmm. and that those business things and those documents, the literature for everyone to be aware should flow out of the producer's mouth to mouth to the to their administrator to be, you know, talked about or conjoined or uh, followed up by whoever the business team for the recording is, whoever the recording uh, managers are whoever the production manager managers are it should all work in tandem because honestly most producers are not um, great at leading um, business side and mm -hmm. leading music side at the same at time. the same time right we're terrible at it at the same time because <laughs> our mind is in creative mode and yes you know studies that show creatives we are not business people when we get into creative mode right we are creatives where, you know, the rules are whatsoever you feel, try it. <laughs> you can't do that with the business stuff. <laughs> you can't do that with the business stuff. You cannot do that with the business stuff. Right. Absolutely cannot. So um, thank God for my wife who serves as an, as an administrator for me. Um, awesome. That's awesome. John Hart has helped me out with some administrative things um, that I've done. Uh, I did a meet and greet with Kirk Franklin's band when they came to D.C. We sat that, down. I, can I tell y'all how I failed at that? <laughs> it was on a Friday. It was on a Friday when they were in I D. thought it was on a Saturday. <laughs> I got up that Saturday morning prepared to travel to D.C. <laughs> and something says, sis, look at that again. And when I looked at it, I because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really wanted to come number one because I wanted to support you mm -hmm. and number two I wanted to be in that room because yeah. I wanted to hear what people were saying so it's yeah. very important y'all when y'all get over 40 y'all gotta read stuff like three or four <laughs> times and write it down on the correct day <laughs> on your calendar <laughs> so you won't miss it okay yeah Ooh. and honestly honestly John helped me plan that and put the, awesome. the legs to it. Because I was like, man, it'll be cool to do this thing. He was like, well, let's do it, bro. Like, why are we going to sit here and talk about it? Let's, <laughs> let's put the legs to it. Yes. And because administration is John's, like, strong suit, yeah. it was 
it it, it flowed perfectly. It everything wow. was phenomenal. So um due to COVID we haven't done much more. Um but once we get back in twenty twenty one, um I had we had people lined up like Wow. The original, and I can I can say this, the original was supposed to be Ariana Grande's band. That was that was the original was supposed to be Ariana Grande's band with Johnny Natural Nahara, uh Aaron Spears, Eric Ingram, uh their production manager. But after things went down with her tour last year mm -hmm. with the bombing in London, mm -hmm. things were just airlock tight. Right. It right. just wasn't happening. And right. it, I get That's that. That's understandable, yeah. yeah I, I ain't going, uh-uh. Yeah. Even when we went to the show, even when we went to the show, my wife brought her purse. She had to put her purse in a locker. And she wow. was hot mad. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> because our stuff was in lockers. Yeah. Take no bags in. Like, wow. no bags. And we didn't know, because, we, you know, we were gifted tickets and, you know, stuff. It, we just wasn't aware, right. and you know, voila. So, thank God for Sean Martin and Aaron and Terry Baker and Vendell. All those guys came out, and they want to do it again. Um, okay. Kirk is supposed to be on tour now. So much of us are supposed to be on tour. <laughs> but, right. um, when it kicks off again, we're going to do another one, um, and we're going to just talk to people and see how their tours are running. Because, to your point earlier when you get a taste of the other side, you realize how much you're missing yeah. with what you're currently doing. Right. And it will rock your world. It rocked my world. <laughs> and I, I, had to, I had to piece a lot of relationships goodbye because my standard changed. Yes. My standard changed. And so for me, you know, if you're asking me to do a tour and you're you at least don't have four figures mm -hmm. and a per diem and mm -hmm. travel and my own room taken care of, don't even Right. <laughs> don't even you know what I'm saying? And that's not yeah. even arrogant, it's just the level in which I'm used to working. Yeah, and you know your value. You right. know your you they they have helped you to set the standard. And that keeps also I remember one time um Steve Lawrence told me, because he's a long-time mentor of mine, told me that it's okay to charge with your word. It'll keep you from running around doing this little stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know your word, charge with your word. You might get a whole lot of no's to that, but those yeses yes, will be right. Will be perfect yeah, for you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I, I've been blessed by some of those yeses. And I have people that tell me now, oh, Lay, I can't afford you. I can't afford you. Well, first of all, you didn't ask me. So <laughs> so if that, I mean, you don't, you don't know what my price is. And then if we have relationship, like long-standing relationship, and I believe in what you're doing, and you still don't ask me, that's, that's your fault. Yeah. But at the same time, it keep, I'm, I'm home a little bit. But when I move, it's a always a move that I can put on paper mm -hmm. and it looks good somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I've learned to be okay with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay I'm, I'm that. You, it was tough. It was really tough. It was really, really tough for me at first um, because I was even starting to question if I was making the right decision of working at the standard. Wow. I was starting to question my own decisions and I had a conversation when someone said the same thing to me that, that Steve Lawrence said to you. Listen, you have to be able to know your worth and be okay with someone telling you no. Yeah. And sometimes no is they don't see your value. Other times no is they don't respect your value. Mm -hmm. But the no is the no. And when they decide to use you, they will realize how wrong they were in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I see yeah. Brian Hill here. Happy birthday, bro. <laughs> um Y'all check out his music. He actually produced two songs for him, three songs, working on a third song. Okay, shameless, cool. Shameless plug, shameless plug. Shameless <laughs> no, plug. That's, that's what this is about. Okay. And I respect him because when he reached out to me, he asked me what the rate was. Right. And it wasn't no nickel and diamond. It right. was, this is what it costs. And he was like, okay, this is what we have to do. This is what we're going to do. And right. so I, 
I respected that, and I'm I'm grateful for artists like he, um, and Jeremiah and Capria, and the you know the stuff that's coming in the future, where people are just okay with honoring your worth. Right, and that's that's oh, that's a good way to end. I love that yeah. people that honor your worth. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up. This is part right. two. I will be posting part two as well. So they'll both be on my I Breathe Melody page, y'all. Please follow Brandon Macklin if you don't already. And, be, and because y'all here, that means y'all follow both of us. So <laughs> tell your friends. Share the, share the video and all that kind of stuff. But Brandon, it's good talking to you. Always and I'm you. looking forward to getting back in the studio with you soon. Soon. It's coming. <laughs> Trust me. It's coming. As soon as we got out this COVID, we going we we rocking. And rocking. Absolutely. All right. All Thank right. you, Les. Thank You're you so welcome. Much. Have See a good night. Man. All right.